please note that we are playing with real matrices in this video. For complex ones, we need to use conjugate transpose rather than transpose. To start with, I'd like to remind you of some special matrices and their corresponding linear transformations. A rotation matrix makes everything rotate about the origin. Where theta is the rotation angle. A scaling matrix, or equivalently, diagonal matrix, will stretch or compress the plane along the axis. Then the idea of SVD is simple here. We decompose a given transformation by a rotation, a scaling, followed by a rotation. Writing the composition down in the form of matrix multiplication, it becomes a decomposition of a matrix A. U times sigma times V transpose. U and V are said to be orthogonal, which acts more generally than a rotation. It can be any linear transformation that preserves length and angle, so it can be a rotation, a reflection, or compositions of them. The diagonal elements of sigma are called the singular values of A. Singular values are always non-negative, and we order them decreasingly. We will see how important they are shortly. This composition is the so-called singular value decomposition, or SVD for short. The SVD is guaranteed to exist, even though A is not square. In which case, the shape of sigma matches that of A, and you can still interpret it as diagonal, as we use zeros to fill the extra parts. In terms of U and V, they are still square orthogonal matrices, but in size of A's row number and column number, respectively. If A is rank deficient, then, not surprisingly, the scaling matrix should also be rank deficient. Actually, we have a stronger result. The rank of a matrix is the number of its positive singular values. In other words, if you like to find the rank of A, just count how many non-zero elements there are in sigma. This is simply because A and sigma shares the same rank, since U and V are a full rank. This property comes in handy while proving rank-relevant conclusions, during which we make use of the SVD of A. Furthermore, the singular values can also be used to represent the matrix norm, which somehow describes the length of a matrix. Here comes my favorite part. If we partition U and V by columns, then it ends up like this, where sigma R is the last non-zero singular value, and so R is the rank of A. Writing this out gives us an expansion of A in terms of its singular vectors, with singular values as the coefficients. Let's see an example. Given the SVD of A, we'll write out its expansion as we've seen before. Sigma 1 times U1 times V1 transpose, and so on. Right here, a column vector times a row vector is called the outer product of two vectors. Recall that the inner product is in the form of a row times a column, which yields a number, while the outer product is in the form of a column times a row, resulting in a matrix, even though the two vectors are not of the same size. The result is always a rank 1 matrix, when it's non-zero of course. Back to the expansion, the magnitude of a singular value indicates how important this rank 1 matrix is as a part of the original matrix. So, the first term, with the largest singular value, is surprisingly close to A as a rank 1 matrix. After adding a term, the result has rank 2 and becomes closer to A. And adding the third term gives us exactly A, the rank 3 matrix. It's not a coincidence that the result increases in rank one by one and becomes closer and closer to A. Actually, we have this theorem. If we write AK as the partial sum of first K terms, then AK has rank K, where K shouldn't be greater than A's rank. Plus, 
A K is the nearest matrix to A in rank K. So, what do you mean by nearest? Well, formally, it should be worded as norm minimization, and we claim that A K is a solution. The norm here describes the distance between A and X, and it can be also Frobenius norm in this case. This kind of problem is called low ring approximation, which can be applied to compress images. This is because an image is stored as a matrix, as in here I use zero for pure black and one for pure white. As you can see, this is a handwritten figure three from Amnesty dataset. The rank one approximation is like this, and it seems to be in strips because. Rows are linearly dependent, and this is the best approximation to three in strips. As the rank increases, more details are added to the result. When rank five is reached, it can be a qualified compressed image, at least for me. You can tell it is three, and it requires less computer storage. As the singular value shrinks, the adjustment becomes less noticeable. I'd like to wrap up this video with the calculation of SVD. If you write out A A transpose and A transpose A, you'll find they are in the form of diagonalization. Thus, you may write out sigma U and V using relevant eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Unfortunately, I don't have time to elaborate on that. But my suggestion is, why not use MATLAB 